The new Star Wars movie, that would be Episode 7, is due to open in theaters December of 2015. This movie chronologically follows the original trilogy, Episodes 4, 5, and 6, which came out between 1977 and 1983. Now, timed perfectly to enhance your appreciation of this George Lucas legacy, is a course offered by University of Wyoming professor of English, Ryan Croft. So, Ryan, you teach some courses that involve medieval literature and Star Wars. Can you Give me an overview of those. I like to teach uh, the old trilogy films, so the films that were made in 1977, 1980, 1983, and I like to look at a wide variety of medieval literature, so literature from England, from France, from Italy, things like Dante's Inferno, Beowulf, um, the Arthurian, French Arthurian romances, and just see how uh, certain medieval tropes like knights and courtly love and, and the monster show up in the Star Wars films and are reinterpreted for a modern audience. So it's not like George Lucas read the things in your syllabus and said, oh, those are some great ideas, I'm going to rip those off. Mm -hmm. you know, is that what well, the we're wonderful, assuming? The wonderful thing about medieval literature is that the same tropes show up in, in all many of the works. And so it's not necessarily that he read the specific texts I'm teaching, but he probably read other texts that have these same tropes. And so with medieval literature, you can look at one text and, and it can be representative of what's going on in the wider culture and in what's going on in other texts too. So, so for example, Arthurian literature, um, you can read one Arthurian romance, get a feel for some of the characters, and those same characters, Kay, Arthur, Lancelot, they will show up in other texts. So. You mean like they're good ideas or they're, uh, they're uni universal myths that, that one way or another we're all, we somehow in our psyches know? Well, medieval culture didn't emphasize originality like we do. They emphasized more literary tradition and that you built on what was already there. So certain myths, like the myth of Arthur, were just kind of ready-made stories that an individual poet could take and shape um, it was, a, and make his own. So it was more that they were drawing on common folklore, common traditions, common myths, and then each poet would give their own individual spin on them. And that's kind of what George Lucas did as well with his movies, is he took common folklores, common myths from all over the world, and then he kind of synthesized them and, and gave his own spin to them in a very medieval fashion. So. This must be a really popular class. Yes, yeah, so students always try to get into it and they're always very disappointed if they can't. So, and they always try to get their friends to take it with them too. What are some of the most important things that you hope they get out of it? Um, I hope they see how medieval literature is still very relevant to us, uh, 500, more than 500 years later, that they see that it still informs popular culture, not just in Star Wars, but in literature like The Hunger Games and other stories, Harry Potter, that they like, that they see that uh, studying English literature can be valuable um, for what it says about modern day life and modern day culture, um, not just movies, but also um, issues about gender, issues about politics, issues about religion, that by looking at the medieval literature and seeing how it's uh, kind of synthesized in Star Wars, they can think about um, issues in modern life in that light and kind of do a historical comparison. In other words, we can better understand our own day if we um, can understand the past and their stories. There's a section in your syllabus about monsters. Mm -hmm. So um, there are obviously a lot of monsters in Star <laughs> Wars. Um, and Darth Vader's kind of a, a monster. Mm -hmm. what, what's the literary purpose that he serves in okay. the trilogy? Well, a lot of times in medieval literature and also Renaissance literature, and even literature up to the 19th century, monsters often are more than just beasts. They represent some kind of inner psychological state, some problem, maybe some sin from a religious point of view. And the monsters in Star Wars do similar things. So Darth Vader, um, as kind of this robot-like monster, um, really symbolizes issues of wrath uh, and envy and kind of the lust for power. Um, Jabba the Hutt in Return of the Jedi, this huge kind of slug-like monster, uh, really represents all seven deadly sins um, in that portion of the film. And so monsters often, I mean, they're great to look at and to kind of buy the toy of, but they're also, they represent ethical dilemmas. And it's something the hero has to defeat, but really what the hero is defeating is not just the monster, but something inside themselves. So when Luke and Leia defeat Jabba the Hutt, they're not just defeating a monster, but they're escaping from problems of lust and greed. Um, that are pursuing them, and Han Solo especially, um, is escaping from the kind of sins of his past by moving away from, from them. So. so the heroes are not all pure and good. Mm -hmm. Oh no, yeah, they're not angelic, um, they're, they're conflicted, they're tempted, um, 
And so the monster is like the more extreme. In some ways, the monster is what the hero could be if they gave in to their desires. So Han Solo, if he doesn't reform and abandon some of his old past ways, he could end up like the monster. And Luke could end up like his father if he doesn't learn to control the destructive emotions of hate and anger. Ah, OK. So um, do you have a favorite character? Um, I really like uh, Princess Leia, uh, and uh, I really like Luke Skywalker. I think they were my favorite brother and sister. Um, I like the journeys that each of them take. It, they tend to be the characters that my students focus on the most as well, especially the young women like to study Princess Leia and see how she grows between uh, A New Hope, the first film, and then Return of the Jedi, kind of uh, grows as a leader and as a woman. And then Luke Skywalker growing from a boy to a man. I feel like their character arcs are the most interesting. When you're teaching this class, do you have something that excites you about it? Um, I'm always excited to see the connections my students make. They always come, I mean, I've thought a lot about the course and about the connections between medieval literature and Star Wars, but they often come up with connections I never thought about before. So for example, one student uh, looked at Dante's Inferno and showed how the images of torture, of hellish torture in that uh, famous poem by Dante, how they show up in Empire Strikes Back in Cloud City when uh, they're kind of going down through these multiple levels of hell and it's getting more and more dark and steamy and dangerous. Um, and you have images of burning. Um, and so what he did is he looked at other films in the Star Wars trilogy as well, like Return of the Jedi, and he just looked at all the images in it that are really comparable to Dante's Inferno. And so after I saw his work with that, I decided to include it in the next version of the class to actually have the students read Dante's Inferno and make those same connections. This is an English class, and you are a professor of English. Why do you require, and in some cases, make it optional for your students to produce a video? Well, I think so much of media today is available online, um, on Twitter and on YouTube. Uh, people can actually make careers out of a YouTube channel um, by getting enough views. They can make money off the advertising. So it's something that, it's a power that I can put in my students' hands. Um, it's something that can also help them uh, even if they don't end up pursuing a career in media. Um, even if they're just teaching in the state of Wyoming, um, they can have their own students in high school um, create similar kinds of projects so that their students can then go on to kind of the future digital careers that we're seeing uh, growing up in this country. Abandoning the written word, we are Dr. Croft. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe in a synthesis between digital media and the written word. So not only do they make a video project in my class in which they take clips from the Star Wars films and mix them with medieval literature, but they're also writing a script for their video. Uh, they're writing papers. They're coming up with a bibliography. They're using traditional research methods in the university library. So it's a real uh, blending of old and new in terms of uh, composition, digital composition and written composition. Dr. Croft, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me.